All right, so this will be part four of why I was homeless. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, happy New Year's, everyone. Um, you know, thanks for all the support. This is this has been you, 2022 was a crazy year for me, and then the way it ended, like I need to make a video about it because uh, the way my my last week or two has been completely insane. Like. And I'm gonna make I'll make a video about it sooner or later. But you know, Happy New Year's, everyone! It's uh, 2023. It's the year of the rabbit. Should be pretty good luck for everyone, I think. Uh, I really haven't even looked up my horoscope for this year. I don't know. I gotta say, it was pretty ac accurate for last year. So um, I'll make a video about the Chinese zodiac. It's complicated. It's not as it's 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 cool, but it's it's a little complicated. But it's really cool once you know how it works. Um, so, 2023 is going to be a great year. I can, f I, it's, I can feel it. So, um, where we left off, if you want to know where we're at up until this point, just watch the previous videos, you know. I'm explaining why I was homeless, and it really, it, to get the full story, I need to make all these, like, kind of longer videos, because in the end, you'll see, you'll understand why I did what I did, you know what I mean? It all makes sense in the end, so... I'm back in my aunt and uncle's house, which is in Valley Stream, New York, which is where I was born. I mean, technically I was born in Oceanside, but I was raised in Valley Stream. So, you know, my parents had a house in Valley Stream on Roosevelt Avenue, and my aunt and uncle lived on Derby Lane, which is a couple of blocks away. So, I'm over, I'm back in my aunt and uncle's house, and it's, it's cool being in the neighborhood I grew up in, you know? It's weird, because... I hadn't been there since I was a kid, and I swear, you feel like a giant now all of a sudden. If, like, it's just weird. Everything's smaller because, you, you know, I grew. It's it's really, it's a strange thing. So, <clears throat> I'm back in my old neighborhood and, you know, living with my aunt and uncle. And I don't want to live with my aunt and uncle, but they're letting me live there for free. This is what I got to do. I'm, I'm an adult. I've been living on my own for, like, ten years. I don't, you know, this is like being back with parents or something you know what I mean my aunt and uncle were there since I was a baby like so you know they don't hesitate to give me orders and shit you know what I mean so I'm at my aunt and uncle's house they're making me go you know walking blocks away just every time I want to smoke a cigarette which I don't mind I I don't I don't mind walking I like taking long walks and shit so but I need to get a job because I have no money and I mean zero I I had maybe two or three bucks to my name. And my uncle ain't about to just start giving me a fucking allowance or something. He ain't like that. Not at all. And honestly, the, I, I, <laughs> like, my, he ain't got to be. He, my, my uncle ain't got no business giving me money. You know what I mean? Like, so, <clears throat> um, I'm on Craigslist looking for a job. I can't do construction because my tools are gone. My truck is gone. Everything's gone, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, life is life is whooping my ass, you know? Like, I'm down to, like, a suitcase full of clothes as my worldly possessions and my drawing pencils. And so... I'm looking on Craigslist for a job, uh, and I'm just... And the other thing with construction is I'm, I want to do stand-up comedy. Now, I know if I'm going to be busting my ass all day doing construction, then... I gotta come home and take a shower and all that shit. It's gonna be probably too much to also pursue stand-up because I want to get out to the city and do stand-up as much as possible. Um, and it's not it's not cheap to get from Long Island to Manhattan because you gotta take the Long Island Railroad. Although le later on I found cheaper ways, which I'll explain. But there, it's a pain in the ass like to do it cheap. But you gotta take the Long Island Railroad, which I don't really remember the prices, but it's a it's an absolute ripoff, dude. It's like ten twenty bucks just to just to get out to Manhattan so and then once you get out to Manhattan you got to pay for the subway so you're looking at like you know round trip you're looking at like fucking 30 bucks just just for transportation just to get out to Manhattan so it's expensive but so I'm on Craigslist just looking for like a telemarketing job because I'm thinking like that won't take too much out of me and <clears throat> you know I'll be able to do stand-up, too. I don't want to fucking do telemarketing. I hate doing telemarketing, but... So, 
I'm looking on Craigslist and I'm, you know, sending some emails out. I, I, and this one is right, it's, it's like a 10, 15 minute walk from my aunt and uncle's house up on like Rockaway Avenue, which is kind of like, it's almost like a little downtown area of like Valley Stream. Jesus Christ, that guy's just dragging, dragging his muffler behind him. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Clearwater is funny, man. This is a, Clearwater is a funny little area, dude. Anyway, so, um, what the fuck was I even talking about? So I'm trying to get a job, and I, and I find this place, there's like a 15 minute walk from my aunt and uncle's house, it's on Rockaway Avenue. So I called the guy, guy answers the phone, thick New York accent, and, uh, I'm like, yeah, I was seeing about the job at some telemarketing, it's telemarketing sales job. He's like, this is, um, this is on a Friday. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm hiring. He's like, uh, where you at? I'm like, I'm in Valley Stream. I could be there in like 10, 15 minutes. He's like, all right. He's, I think it was a Thursday actually. He's like, come by tomorrow and, and I'll talk to you. And I'm like, okay. So the next day I, I go over there and for some reason I just kind of like this guy right off the bat. He's. I can tell he, he's just old school, like, New York, you know what I mean? So, I go to the place, I, I, and I go upstairs, and uh, I walk in, and this big black dude, he's like, what He's like, what do you need? I was like, well, I'm here for an interview, and he's like, I'll do the interview, and then this other guy pops up, he's like, no, Mark, I got it. And I tell you what, this, I don't think that black guy would have hired me it, later on, like, me and him just didn't really like each other, but... So the other guy pops up, he's like, I'll do it. And this guy looks like a Guido, like Long Island Guido, Italian guy. A little older than me, but not much. You know, his hair's all moosed up and shit. <laughs> like, so I'm like, he's like, I'll do the interview. And he takes me back to the office, and I don't know who this guy is. As it turns out, he was the owner of the company and a fucking millionaire, but you would not have guessed it to look at him. You would have thought he was some sort of, like, Goomba from fucking, you know some Long Island, you know, Jersey Shore type dude, you know, but so, he's, uh, he's like, where are you from, I'm like, I'm from New York, but I lived in Florida, I lived in Vegas, and he's like, why are you traveling, he's like, why are you bouncing around like that, were you a fucking felon or something, I was like, nah, and I, I gave him a quick rundown, I'm like, I just, you know, things are, the economy's all fucked up, and, you know, I'm not cursing and shit, but, I'm like, I, um, you know, it's just the way things have gone, dude. I'm, I'm not, you can check my fucking record. I, I've been arrested for, like, possession of alcohol as a minor. Stupid things. Weed. Little bullshit. So, he's like, um, he's like, alright. And then, I, and I was like, well, I also do stand-up comedy. That's why I came back to New York. He's like, get the fuck out of here. That was what he said. I'm like, yeah, I do stand-up. Because I don't seem like the type to do stand-up. He's like... He's like, let me see something you did with stand-up. He's like, you got something on YouTube or something? And I had it. I had a stand-up video on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but I curse. And he's like, I don't give a shit. If you... He's like, well, what's the fucking... Tell me it. So he looks it up. And he's sitting there watching it. And he's fucking cracking up. He's loving it. And he's like, you're good, man. He's like, holy shit. He's like, that is fucking funny. He's like, you're hired, dude. He's like, come back Monday, man. He's like, We're, I'm going to fucking train you. I'm going to give you a job. He's like, I like you, man. I'm like, you know, thanks, dude. His name was Frank. I'm not going to say his last name because in the end, Frank got deported back to Italy. <laughs> he got kicked out of America. But so Frank hires me and... uh my, you know, my aunt and uncle buy me a couple of, like, button-down shirts and, you know, because Frank, it's, he wants you to look, like, professional or whatever, so, I fucking, um, he wanted me to come in Monday, so I show up on Monday, and he hired me, and he hired this, this black chick who was pretty cute, actually, like, I was, the whole time I was thinking, like, I kind of, I kind of want this chick, dude. But she was like 30 something years old, but I don't know, there's just something about her, dude. You know, some chicks just like, I don't know, man. But <laughs> we, nothing ended up happening with, with me and her. But, uh, so they're like training us. And as it turns out, the place where I work is, um, I don't want to say the name of it because in the end, this place, <laughs> a lot of illegal shit was happening. And I, I just don't want to put it, I, I don't want to say the name of it. So, 
what we do in this place is we call people up and we try to sell them a, a spot in a business networking book for like a thousand bucks but the way it's done is now there's a bunch of these companies which all branched off from this main one which used to be in like on wall street in manhattan so this this main one is like the real deal you know what i mean it's this actual business networking book that people are kind of they don't let just anyone in they recruit people to be in it and it's like if you want to be in it you got to pay them a, a lot of money but you know but it is it's like it's an it's an advantageous thing for like business people but so a lot of the little you know slick ass new yorkers who were working for this guy in wall street just got to thinking of themselves like man i fuck this guy i'm gonna start my own so frank was one of those people <laughs> and and frank was born in italy he's initially from italy he came to new york his father was a maintenance guy in an apartment complex frank went from pretty poor you know from a from a poor family to a millionaire he drove like a two hundred thousand dollar mercedes frank was a fucking millionaire so you got to respect that that of it he's not the most honest guy but he, he he brought himself up from nothing and made himself filthy rich but in the end he lost everything but so frank was you know i liked frank i liked frank a lot a lot of people didn't like frank i fucking loved frank anyways so <clears throat> we um so what it is is i'm calling people up trying to sell them a spot in this business networking book and i'm <laughs> right off the bat I'm like this is this is a little fishy you know what I mean but whatever I gotta make money I, I want to do stand-up comedy I gotta get out to the sea These fucking mosquitoes are dude the mosquitoes in Florida are non-fucking stop dude I'm just getting attacked right now so Frank does a little training thing and I uh I don't want to do it but I'm this is what I gotta do so I'm figuring I'm not gonna I'm you know I'm not gonna pressure these people into doing nothing they don't want to do. If I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be as honest as possible while not getting fired for lack of sales. So, as it turns, fuck. As it turns out, my first call, I get a fucking sale on it. Like, God was just with me, bro. So I right, like first call, I got a thousand dollar sale for Frank. Frank's like this. I knew this kid was great, man. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> and so. But I, I honestly couldn't, I didn't feel right charging these people a thousand bucks because I saw the book and I'm like, it just wasn't put together that well. And this was after I had worked there for a little while. And, um, I just, I just, I was like, this is, this is kind of a fucking rip off dude. So what I would do with a lot of the people is I'd sell them the cheapest spot in the book, which is a couple of hundred bucks. I just didn't feel right charging them a thousand bucks, you know? But I didn't want to just not make money for Frank. I, I wanted to I want I wanted to make more for him than he was paying me, so he'd keep me working, you know. So I'm working for Frank, and I'm finally able to afford to to go do stand up. And Frank had a Christmas party, and he's like, he's like, man, you want to do stand up at my Christmas party? I'll give you a hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll do it. So I'm I have like no money at this point. My buddy Vaughn loaned me like fifty bucks just to keep keep me <clears throat> from being completely destitute so frank's like come out to my christmas party i'll give you a 100 bucks to do some stand-up so <laughs> frank has this pretty badass christmas party gives me a 100 bucks i do stand up and he's buying me drinks all fucking night it was a fun night and so on top of the 100 he he also spent like fucking god knows what on the tab you know so um so then i finally there's this website, if you do stand-up comedy, there's a website called badslava.com, B-A-D-S-L-A-V-A.com. It shows every open mic in the country, and back then, they were on point. Like, this was, a lot of the people in New York were using this website to figure out what new mics were popping up, because there's so many open mics in New York that it's, it's hard to keep track of them all. But I gotta say, once you know the scene, there's only a few that are worth doing. Most of them are a fucking complete waste of time. But so... I'm I'm on Bad Slava just uh, I and I kind of just found it on my own. I just stumbled into it, 
and I'm on bed, Slava, looking for an open mic to do, because now I can afford to do stand-up, and I can't fucking wait, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty psyched up after, in Vegas, I'm, I, I was undefeated in stand, every single stand-up comedy competition I had been in up until this point, I won, I, every single one, so, I'm like, I'm the shit, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm the fucking best comedian that ever walked the fucking earth, I'm pretty arrogant, you know, but, which ended up costing me a lot in the end, but so, the first open mic I go to, it's, I don't even remember exactly where it was, it was somewhere in the Lower East Side, in some basement somewhere, and I get there, and there's literally like seven depressed, you know, comedians in this basement waiting to do stand-up, and it was like, that was the entire crowd, I'm like, what the fuck is this, that, like, I just came from Vegas where I'm doing crowds of 200 people, you know what I mean, and here I am, in some dingy ass basement in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, and I'm like, what the fuck is this, I, I, I knew the minute I wa walked in that this is a waste of my fucking time, I'm doing stand-up comedy for 10 open micers who do not give a shit, the host was cute, it was this Russian chick, I think her name was Looper or something, that was the only, the only positive about the whole thing, she was a very attractive Russian girl, woman, she was like 40-something, but hot, dude, so, that was the only, the only plus side to the entire, so I'm like, I'm like, what the, f maybe I should have stayed in Vegas, what the fuck is this, dude, you know, so, <clears throat> I, everyone's doing their stand-up, nobody's, nobody's very funny, it's pretty much torture, no one's laughing at anything, I go up, <laughs> and no one's even laughing at my jokes, they just don't give a shit, maybe a chuckle here and there, like, if you're, if you're pretty good, people, you know, these are comedians, they're not gonna sit there fucking yucking it up, but they'll get, they'll like, audibly chuckle, just to be like, that was, that was good, you know, so there's a little bit of that happening, but I'm like, what the fuck is this, dude, what a waste of fucking, so, I'm like, this, this is fucking, this is ridiculous, man, so, I go back to my aunt and uncle's house and I'm really starting to doubt. I'm like, man, maybe I should have stayed in Vegas because at least there I, I was entertaining people and, you know, I was killing crowds. I was killing pretty much every crowd. Now what am I? I'm going to do stand up for 12 people at a time who don't want to hear it. So I uh, get back to my aunt and uncle's house. I'm working for Frank, whatever. Then. I don't know even how I found out about this. I saw it online or something. There was at Comics Comedy Club in, in Manhattan. This is in like, I think it was the, the like meat packing district or what, what do they call that now? Now it's like some really expensive, it's like the lower west side of Manhattan. So I, um, I, Comics Comedy Club is doing this thing called March Comedy Madness where they're having like, every comedian in New York City is gonna compete, and this is, like, every fucking comedian in New York City, so I'm like, here's my chance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking wreck every one of these motherfuckers, man, so I go to the audition, and I fucking murder it, um, so finally, at the audition, they got me in a crowd in front of a crowd of a couple hundred, because it's all the comedians in the city who are trying to get in this competition, so finally, I got a crowd, but we can only do two minutes, which is no problem for me, because I can... I can squeeze off like three, four jokes in two minutes. Like, so I just did three, three, four quick little jokes. They, the, the crowd was, they were fucking cracking up. They're like this kid, the, the, he's good, you know. It was all the comedians in New York City, and everyone was like, you know, they love me. And so I get to the next round, which is now I'm in the competition. There's 64 comedians, and, um. And one of my one of my friends in Florida, his sister had ha happened to move to New Jersey pretty recently, so now I think it's I don't know it's like a Friday night or something, and this is the first round of the competition, and my buddy's sister, um, I don't know we 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 got to we were communicating back and forth a little bit. She's like, yeah, I'll come out. I want to see this shit. So she comes out, and I go up against. I don't remember the comedian's name, it was, um, uh, I don't remember his name, but I fucking smoked him, dude, like, the, the way they, they decide who wins is, I'm not gonna say the comedian's names, except for at the end, because the one who beat me in the end, well, I just ruined the whole fun, <laughs> is, is a, he's a good comedian, and he's good, anyways, so, I wrecked this kid, dude, the crowd, 
to say they liked me is a fucking understatement. They they were it was the, the fucking roof almost came off the place. I killed them that hard because the first round was only like a minute or two, and most comedians it takes them a minute or two just to just to get to starting to a bit or something. I could I I ripped off I I did like you know three four jokes in in this amount of time. So the crowd fucking loved me, dude. And so. I, you know, my buddy's sister was so hyped up. She was like, holy shit. She was like, they fucking, she was like, they were going fucking nuts, man. She's like, I don't think they were that loud for anyone, you know? But that was only the first round. And then the next round, I forget. Now it's like they're doing one round a week. So the next week, I go up. Oh, and at this point, I had rented an apartment. So I'm not living with my aunt and uncle no more. I'm renting some dungeon basement shithole in like northern valley stream like it's like a blood neighborhood but it didn't matter everyone like the thing with gangs and shit is if you're not in a gang they pretty much don't give a shit about you you know what i mean so everyone pretty much just ignored me asked me for a cigarette once in a while if i'm walking by but so i um i'm i'm renting this shithole dingy basement sh dump dungeon with no heat and whatever, but I was paying like 600 a month, so, I'm, you know, so round two comes, it's the next week, I wrecked the kid, the, you know, it's like, the, um, the rounds are getting a little longer each time, I wreck him, next week comes by, I go up against the dude, I smash him, and now I'm in the finals, that was the semi-finals, and uh, so the next week comes around, and who I'm up against is Sam Morrill. You can look him up. He's a he's a pretty good comedian, especially back then when you got to realize I had only been doing stand up really for about a year or two. You know what I mean? And he had been doing stand up for a while. But either way, he's good, and he legitimately he had more material than me. I didn't want to be repeating material I already used. So like, I was almost out of like fire material. I had used it all to get to that point. So. But what I should have done, and you know, hindsight 2020, I should have just went with all my best material. But like a moron, that's not what I did. I was thinking, all right, I already did that, you know. But so, we, me and Sam go at it, and and he wins. And honestly, I was not, I I wasn't really disappointed at all. I was like, at least I lost to probably the best comedian in this whole fucking thing. And, um. And at least I got to the end, you know what I mean? So walking home that night, walking back to the train, I I was pretty hyped up. It was probably the happiest I've ever been in my life, or one of, one of the happiest times. I bought some pizza, and man, I, I felt like a million bucks, because I, now the entire New York comedy scene knows who I am, and they know that I had pretty much, like, you know, beaten, beaten pretty much everyone except for Sam Morrill, who was, everyone knew he was fucking good you know what i mean so my rep all of a sudden is good and uh and so all the comedians in new york know who i am and then so then i start hearing about other mics and i'm sorry well i'm not hearing about them but i'm hitting them up on bad slava i've i'm getting I'm, a lot of them are shit but i'm starting to find some good ones there was the the creek in the cave which I had other comedians, like, I'm talking to comedians at the mics, and they're like, everyone kept mentioning the creek in the cave, which, as it turned out, is one of the best fucking mics on earth, to be honest. It's not an easy mic. It's a New York, New York fucking mic where you, there's going to be a lot of people there, but it ain't going to be, they ain't going to be no supportive, easy crowd. If you kill it, you're going to kill it. If you don't, they, they ain't, they ain't going to pretend that you did. So, then there's the pit which is the People's Improv Theater, which was another mic which was infamously difficult because it's the pit and that was that was just how it was. Everyone used to go there, but people were not gonna, they ain't, they ain't gonna be supportive. They don't give a shit. It doesn't matter if Sam, you know, they could, they could like you as a comedian, but if you don't do well that night, ain't nobody gonna sit there and pretend you did, so. The first night I do the pit, everyone is bombing. And I mean everyone. And these are comedians I've seen around the scene who are, they're good. And I'm like, wow, one after the other, they're just eating shit, dude. And so then I go up. But, 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 but one thing that I'm noticing is a lot of them are good at bombing. It's like, they're not getting rattled. They're not getting shook. It's nothing to them. They're like, 
they're bombing comfortably, which I had never seen before, and it's something I I am not. I, when I bomb, I just want to be invisible. I don't. I hate it, but they didn't seem to give a shit. I'm like, that takes some fucking nerve, and so everyone's bombing, but none of them seem to care at all. So, so I go up, and I'm like, man. I'm like, y'all, y'all fucking good at bombing. I was like, y'all got that down fucking pat. And <laughs> fucking, they were all laughing because it, like, it was just, it was true, you know? Everyone was just bombing well. <laughs> and so, at, once you make them laugh once, it ain't hard to make them laugh again, you know? So I actually did real good that night in the pit. And every time I did the pit, I did pretty good. Um, but... So, and then the creek in the cave, what they do on Friday nights is there's one mic downstairs at like seven, and then there's another mic upstairs at like nine. And every, all the good comedians in New York used to go there on Friday night. And I mean, all of them, all the good ones used to go there and party all fucking night pretty much. But this was the mic to be on a Friday night. It was the creek in the cave. It's not in New York no more. It used to be in Long Island City in Queens, but. Rebecca had to move it to Austin, Texas. Now it's in Austin, Texas. The reason she had to move it was because of all the COVID bullshit. They 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 ruined New York City with that shit. That was why I left New York too, which I'll get to that later on. But so, um, the creek in the cave is a is a badass mic, and I didn't kill it every time. I'm not gonna pretend I did. I because the other thing is when I'm doing stand up at this point, I'm. All I'm trying to do is is come up with new material. If something works and I know it works, I don't fucking do it no more. That's for a paid crowd. That's not that's not for me to look cool at an open mic, you know. So all my material that worked, I just put it to the side. And every and I was working real hard to come up with new material. And that's why I've got pages and pages of good material because I was doing it like this. My only concern at this point was coming up with good new material and I was coming up with maybe a minute or two maybe um, I, a couple of minutes a month I'm coming up with which is not bad when when you're going as consistently as me but so now working for Frank I'm you know there was weeks my commission was good I'd make a lot of money there was weeks my commission was bad I wouldn't make a lot of money because if I called the people and they were into it and they wanted to be in the book I'd sell them the the full I'd get them for like a thousand fifteen hundred whatever but if I had to really sell them on it I'd just get them on the smallest one and because I don't want to fuck them out of their money and because I know this book is not it ain't what they think it is it's not the one from Wall Street you know so um after a while, I just, I kind of hated the job so much, and I just, I wasn't into it at all. I didn't want to quit, but I kind of wanted to get fired <laughs> so I could get unemployment and keep doing stand-up. And so, eventually, that's what happened. Frank was like, man, he's like, you, you got to start selling more, or I got to let you go. I'm like, I get it, Frank. I, you know, you're not, this ain't a fucking charity you're running. I didn't take it personal at all, and I, like I said, I kind of wanted him to fire me <laughs> so I could get unemployment. So, uh, and the other thing is, I just, uh, to be honest, I really didn't want to be, I just didn't want to be connected to this company. It was just, it was a little shady, man. So, finally, the summer rolls around, and then Frank's like, I got to let you go. I'm like, all right, I get it, no problem. <laughs> so, I get on unemployment, but. I can't really afford to do stand-up much. Like, they didn't give me much unemployment. I can only get out to the city, like, once a week to do stand-up. And, you know, I've still got to pay rent. And I'm barely eating this entire fucking time. And it was a long fucking winter. I'll put it to you that way. And it snowed that whole fucking winter. This was 2010, 2000. This was the, the end of 2010? Yeah. So, um, but then my aunt and uncle call me up and they're like, Joey, you want, you, you need a fucking job. They're like, we can get you a job. Your cousin Johnny works at the horse track on Long Island in, in Belmont where they do the Belmont Stakes. Your cousin's in there. He'll get you in if you want the job. And they're like, we suggest you take it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, that's, you know, it's a huge relief to me, but I'm also thinking like, 
Isn't that kind of pussying out on what I set out to do? I'm out here to do stand-up comedy. I'm not out here to to do to work like a reg to do that regular shit. I didn't come all this way to do that, but you know what? I'm tired of be just being in this basement. I can't afford to do anything. All I'm doing is writing jokes. I'm getting out to the city once a week. Whole winter goes by. I'm it's there's snow on the ground and the whole fucking winter there was snow on the ground. And I've got no heat in this apartment. And the the roommates are coming and going. So initially the first roommate was this black chick, pretty decent looking chick, but there was just nothing absolutely no like connection between us so we pretty much just ignored each other next one was this chinese dude who was like straight from china messiest person i ever met in my life i've never seen I, uh, he barely even spoke english so we didn't really communicate but then this dude nas moves in and right off the bat me and nas are friends like he's just one of them people where he's you know cool you know we clicked right off the bat so i fucking love nas but so um the whole winter goes by and, and my and my aunt and uncle tell me about this job my cousin Johnny can get me and so but but he can't he can't he can't get me the job till May of like um of the you know so I gotta sit there the whole fucking winter and just be broke but I can't wait till May when I can get when I can get this job so end of April rolls around I take the bus over to Belmont I meet the boss this guy Paul Paul was cool. All the bosses at Belmont are cool. I, I liked everyone there. All the people I worked, I liked everything about the job except it just I didn't come all that way to work there. I didn't I didn't come all that way to do that. So, but it, but I tell you why I was so broke and so kind of just desperate to not be broke anymore that I I went in. I talked to Paul and Paul's like, well, yeah, he's not you, you you Johnny's cousin. Johnny's great. We fucking love him. So you're hired <laughs> pretty much. Come in. I think um, it, it was either maybe May 15th or something. Oh, and here's a funny little story. I, I had to pass a piss test to, to start at Belmont. So, all right, we're, we're, getting, we're getting low on time here. So let me, um, maybe I should just leave it right there. So I knew that in order to get this job at Belmont, I had to take a piss test. I'm going to leave you all with a bit of a cliffhanger. So, um... I'm like, whatever, I ain't smoked weed in months. <laughs> and then <clears throat> I go out to the creek in the cave, do an open mic, I get wasted. Someone's outside smoking weed, I ain't thinking about nothing, I'm duh, fucking... He's like, you wanna hit it? And I'm like, yup, <laughs> fucking... Me and him smoke the fuck out, and I'm thinking nothing of it, I fucking go home, and I wake up the next day, like, bolt upright, like... Oh shit, what the fuck did I do? I need to pass a piss test this coming Friday. So I'm in fucking panic mode, dude. I I don't I don't know if like and we were smoking good, strong fucking weed. I I was hitting it like my life depended on it, dude. Like you know, just I was in party mode, you know what I mean? And fucking <laughs> I'm thinking I better not have fucked this up because the unemployment is like, it ain't gonna, I probably would have been able to get it for a couple more months, but I didn't want to fucking be that broke no more, you know? And so I'm like, oh shit, you know? And I fucking, I, I'm Googling on the internet how to pass a piss test and all this shit. I know they're going to watch me piss. They're going to sit there looking at your dick. So, <clears throat> anyways, I'll get to that in the next video. I've got to rewatch this and see, see, make sure it makes sense and everything. But so, you know, happy New Year, everyone! Thanks, thanks for the support. You guys are fucking great. We're gonna, we're gonna do interesting things with this fucking channel. I tell you what, man, I'm, I'm kind of trying to get through this whole homeless thing because there's other videos I want to do, man. Because I'm leaving out so much shit that. There's so many lessons and stories in there that I, if I did it all, it, like, the, the videos would be fucking five hours long. So, you know, and then I, I don't need to go through, like, this, I'm, this is a rough outline of what I've been through so people can reference it later on or whatever. And, you know what I mean? Because when I'm telling stories later on, you can see, like, what part of, whatever, you know, you, you see what I'm doing. So, you know, 
Appreciate all y'all, man. The fucking you guys are fucking great, man. I can't do everyone by name. I, I would if I could. You know what I mean? And PayPal doesn't let me thank people. It doesn't let me communicate with people. It just doesn't let me. Like Cash App, Venmo, I can send them a heart or whatever, but PayPal just doesn't let me do no shit like that. So believe me, I'm not fucking ignoring you. And I and I really appreciate y'all, man. You guys are fucking. I love y'all, man. Y'all fucking. This channel's turning out. This shit's turning out great, bro. Anyways, so. Next video, you know, either be some, you know, within the next couple of days, I'll get it up. And, uh, so, I'll see y'all in the next one. Happy New Year.